So on first launch, you just get a simple little launch screen. You can load an image or here's something that I just, I love this about Mac fun apps. There's a little sample image. You can load a sample image, click that so that you can start to play with an image that's been provided for you. And I think that is really, really cool. We're not going to install the plugins right now, um, which by the way, this app will run as a plugin for Photoshop, Lightroom, Aperture, or Photoshop Elements. So that's pretty slick, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna focus on that. I love that you get a sample image, but we're not gonna use a sample image. We're gonna use one of my pictures because, you know, I have pictures too. So I've got a wee little folder on the desktop here. And I'm going to start with this picture of this cool tiger that I just shot at the LA Zoo last week, because this tiger is pretty. All right, so we are opening this up and waiting, waiting for that to open up. And while that's opening up, we'll do this so that I can, you know, continue to pontificate. Hey, there it is. All right, back to the Mac. Let's go full screen on this bad boy. And let's do a quick UI tour. Now, one of the things that you're going to see right away is if you are familiar with Mac Fun Apps, let's get out of the way of that thing. If you're familiar with Mac Fun Apps, um, this is going to feel familiar. They have adopted a fairly consistent UI across the apps, which is great. I think this really helps users to know where to go to find things. I appreciate this a lot, actually. It's one, it seems like a little thing, but it's kind of a big deal. And essentially what that means is you've got across the top, your toolbars, which I mean, you're going to find that in any app, right? On the right, you have all your adjustments and you're going to find a whole lot of adjustments here. And then up, down at the bottom, you've got your presets. And you know, presets can be really, really cool, but I'm, you know, I like to make my own stuff. But if you look in here, if you click on, on the right here where it says basic, you'll see there's a few different collections of presets. There's, you know, uh, there's some cool ones. There's some that are completely overbaked. It's just one of these things where, you, you know, you want to put some presets in there and there's some cool stuff. But for the most part, I don't want to look at the presets. And that's one of the coolest things is that I can hide that. Up here on the top, I shouldn't say coolest thing, but it's a cool thing. Up here in the top right corner, you see a couple little icons. This one here will allow you to hide the presets and the one on the right will allow you to hide the toolbar. Also, while you're working, if you hit the tab bar or the tab key, that will also re uh, remove whatever you are currently looking at. So like if I have the presets up as well and I hit tab, both of those go away. If I don't have the presets showing, then just the tool, tool palette on the right will go away. Okay, so let's run through some of these some of these icons up in the top here. Um, you know what? Open, standard, open, save, export kind of thing. Zoom, compare, before and after type of thing. It's all pretty much standard stuff. Um, undo, redo, and that the, the kind of things you would expect. Here you find your histogram. Honestly, I'm not sure why you can turn these off. But you can hide your histogram and hide your layers. Maybe if you're on a really small screen, you just want to have a little bit more more space for your palettes. That's great. But for the most part, I think a histogram is pretty important to have up all the time. And layers, I guarantee once I show you how these work, you're never going to turn those off because that's just awesome. Down the right, there's a few adjustment tools and brushing tools, masking tools. And what you're going to find in here is that masking is a cornerstone of how this app works. Now, before we get into all the different adjustments that are here, this is the part that I want to hit on that's a really important differentiator between this and something like Photoshop. Now, th this is not a Photoshop competitor. Right. This is Photoshop obviously does about 10,000 things or more. What this is, is an extremely capable photo editor with some very interesting approaches to how things are done in a very simplified way. Now, a lot of the adjustment techniques that I'm going to show you are things that you could do in Photoshop, but you really got to know how it's not necessarily obvious. Whereas in here, all these great techniques are simply obvious. And that's what I'm going to show you right now first, because this is just, it's a very, very cool way to work. So you'll notice here, we've got this layers tab. And right now we have a layer zero that's there. So this first layer is not this image. So if you are coming from an app like Photoshop, then you know that you open the image and that image is the layer. And you can make adjustments to that. But if you want to do non-destructive adjustments, then you put some type of image adjustment layer on top of it, some type of like a curves, dynamic curves or whatever. That's the only way you work. And if you want to put uh, curves on, you put curves on. Then if you decide you want to put saturation dynamically, non-destructively, you put another saturation layer on top of that and so on and so on. You stack them up. If you're working in an app like Lightroom or Aperture, then you're, you don't think in layers because you don't have a layers representation. You don't 
add a layer to do one thing and add another, another layer to do another. At least you don't from the interface perspective. Behind the scenes, that's kind of what you were doing. You were kind of adding layers of adjustments. It was just completely invisible to you. So with Luminar, what's happened is a lot of that has been basically exposed, allowing you to take control in ways that you simply couldn't do before. So now that that's said, there's an, a layer that is here by default, and that's this adjustment layer. You see it right here, it's just called layer zero. And I know it's an adjustment layer because this little icon there, the adjustment sliders, that tells me it's an adjustment layer. So that layer is on there, nothing's happened to it. The photo, the original photo is basically laying underneath it. Now you can do things, scaling things and other stuff to the original photo, but that's for like later lessons. Just think about the base layer is an invisible thing that has the photo. And on top of that, we're going to add adjustment layers. Now, what I want to show you here is that you can actually, when you go to hit plus, you can add as many adjustment layers as you want, but you can also add a new image layer. So if you wanted to do some kind of compositing, you can. Now, that's not something you can do in Lightroom or in Aperture or a lot of other basic image editing apps. It's really just about that one image. But here you can. Here you can composite multiple layers. So this is really cool. OK, so now that that said, let's just say I add an adjustment layer. Oh, it's already there. Layer zero is already there. So we're just going to leave that. And let's do something really simple. I'll do a exposure adjustment. Let's uh, I don't know, bring it up a little bit and let's bring up the contrast a bit. And yeah, I don't know, let's uh, do shadows, bring it down, make it a little bit darker. I'm just trying to make something. Let's take the saturation way up. OK, so this is just a very simple series of adjustments just so that you can see that I've done something. Uh, if I want to do a before and after, up here, I've got a little eyeball there. If I click on that eye, it's going to do a quick preview to the before and after. And next to that, there is a before and after um, side by side. So you can do that. And I think if you click through this, it goes, is it going to do this? Uh, no, it just turns that on or off, on or off. So there you've got your before and after there. OK, so clearly we've done something to it. Now, remember, everything that we just did happened on an adjustment layer that is sitting on top of the image, which means that now I can start adjusting the mask between that layer and the image underneath it. That this is where the real power of this comes in. And again, this isn't something that you can't do in something like Photoshop, but it's way easier to do here. And as you're going to see soon, as you start piling it on, these are things you can't do in Lightroom. I have a fly going through his death throes on my desk. This is disgusting. OK, let's go back to the computer. And so I've got my layer here. I have a series of tools down the right here. I've got a brush. I have a gradient a linear gradient, gradient mask, and then a radial gradient. So let's just grab the linear gradient, because I think this is something a lot of people really like. I know I do. So I've clicked it to select it. You notice I have instructions in the middle of the screen. Click and drag to draw a gradient. And let's just do that. Well, before we do anything else, let's just grab that and drag it. So I drag that down. And now I've just drawn a gradient mask for the adjustments that I just put in. That's all there was to it, right? Gradient mask on top of that, and the adjustments are in place. OK, well, what if I want to, I don't know, uh, yeah, let's find another filter, add clarity. I want to add clarity to this. OK, so let's go ahead and apply that and apply that guy. So that's now on there. And you can see, by the way, you can see, if I zoom into this, you can see that this layer mask now has this gradient representing the gradient that I've just done. OK, so I'm going to go in and increase the clarity. Let's just crank it way up just so you can really see what's happening. That is being applied to this layer, but that layer mask is still masking it out. OK, well, that's fine. But now I, you know, I've got saturation and clarity and all this other stuff up here. But I want to do something different down here on the bottom. Well, all you have to do is add another adjustment layer. So I add another adjustment layer. And we're going to come into this in a minute because this is crazy cool. But let's add, and let's add fog to it because we don't have that anywhere else. And let's crank the fog way up. And now that fog is added over the entire image. But that's not what I wanted. What I wanted was the fog only on the bottom. So I'm going to grab that gradient tool, drag up on there again. And now I've added that to the bottom. And this is a terrible adjustment, obviously. This is, you know, you would do this to your photo. But I'm just trying to illustrate how these adjustment layers work. So what I'm showing here is that you have as many layers as you want. Actually, there might be a limit. Kevin, tell me if there's a limit. But you've got essentially as many layers as you want, adjustment layers. Each one of those layers can have any or all of the adjustment tools applied to it. Then that layer can be brushed. It can be ha uh, have a great radial mask or a linear mask applied to it. And then you can do it again.
So if you want to concentrate on the lamppost over here and do 50 different things to it, you can do it, brush it into just that layer and then move on. You also have the ability to copy and paste your masks between layers. So if you've done something really complex to one area and you want to replicate that somewhere else, you don't want to have to redo the mask because the mask works for whatever reason, you can do that. You can copy and paste the mask. It's a really, really powerful way to work. So with that 10 layers max, okay, so 10, Kevin's telling me there's 10 layers maximum to this. If you can't get your image adjusted in 10 layers, I don't know what to tell you. Reshoot. No, I'm kidding. But uh, that's 10 layers. In this. That's, that's pretty cool. All right. So now let me reset all this. And let's just start going through some of the adjustments because the adjustments that are in here are really cool. Uh, let's, we're going to open up a different image too. Let's go in here. Let's just open a different image. Um, what is that? Do I want to open this one? Uh, what is this picture? Well, it's, the, it's a bridge in... in yeah, let's open this one. It's a bridge in Portland. We're going to open this guy up. And we're going to start playing with the layer options that we've got in here because there are so many adjustments. Oh, and by the way, if you didn't see it, um, I'm not going to demo it to you, but you have your blend modes and you, know, you can set a layer, an adjustment layer to difference or overlay or max min, whatever. You, you have all those adjustments there. They're in there. And, um, and that's really cool. Kevin's also adding, don't forget about filter masking, which is super valuable and extends the idea of masking way further. Um, isn't that what I'm showing? I'm confusing something, Kevin. So uh, elaborate for me, please. So let's go and take a look at some of the adjustments that we have. All right, so I am in a, actually, we'll come back to that. Let's just look at the adjustments. So color temperature, tone, saturation, vibrance, polarizing filter, clarity, structure, vignetting. Okay, you know, standard. That's what you'd expect to find. And at the bottom, you have a little button that says add filter. Okay, so I click on add filter. And then you look and you go, whoa, hold on a second. There's a lot of cool filters in here. Well, that's all of them. Let's, we can kind of categorize these. Those are color filters, creative filters, tonal enhancing filters, and so on. But let's just go back to the all. Oh, God, there's so many of them. I don't know. What do I, what do I want? So look at this. There's a search. Now, this is one of those dumb, easy features that you just suddenly wish every app in the world had. I'm going to search for split. I want to do split toning. Well, look, I got two splits. I got a split color warmth and a split toning. Okay, well, hold on. Oh, and by the way, if I want a favorite one, I can just hit the little star there and now it's a favorite. So, okay, well, what's the difference between split color warmth and split toning? Now, you could obviously apply it and play with it. Oh, okay, well, all right, that's the difference. Okay, and mess around with it. But there's something even better. Check this guy out. Up here in the top left, you see this little double arrow here. Click on that. And it opens up a preview, not of the image that you're looking at, but a well-chosen preview to show the difference. And you have examples. So split color warmth explains what it is. Selectively enhances cool and warm tones in your image. Go to split toning. Tones the image with separate colors for the highlights and shadows. Ah, well, that's what I was looking for. And you get a before and an after example of what you've gotten. Someone doesn't like my demo. Sorry, hobbledy gaga, this is my demo style. Um, <laughs> and you've got an example of what that filter does, which is just so cool. So I go and I go split toning. I'm going to choose that. And now I've got my split toning and I can go and let's say, take my highlights and I can rotate the hue on the highlights, saturate those up a bit. Let's go to the shadows, right? Take the hue on there. Oop, where do we go? Here we go. Put those in there and dial in the different colors for your split toning as you want. But the point is, as you add a filter, you can search for the ones that you want in here get a preview of what each one is, which I think is just fantastic. And of course, search by name for them, which makes it really easy to find what you're looking for. When you, which, when you have this many things, I gotta say, that's a huge advantage. You have so many different options and you want to know there's a split something somewhere in here. Great, great way to find it. I haven't dug in to see how deeply the searching goes. If it's just searching the name or for searches through the description, Kevin, since you're watching, if it's not searching through the description, let's do that because that's sometimes the naming isn't exactly what you think it should be, um, but it's in the description. So feature request if it isn't already in there. All right, uh, let's go back to this and let's just take a look now at what other filters are in here. So this is, this is where we really start to see the kind of things that are in this that aren't available everywhere else. So adjustable gradient. So you have gradient filters, simple, simple gradients. Now you can recreate a lot of that manually, but you have a simple gradient adjustment in here. Uh, advanced contrast. This gets into things like micro contrast, adjusting contrast, just in the midtones or shadows, very powerful. Black and white conversion. So now there are additional tools from MacFun that are dedicated to black and white, for example. So this is going to give you a 
basic level of black and white. When you combine that with all the other adjustments, you can do some incredible black and white things. But if black and white images, images is your ball game, that's what you want to do, then you definitely want to check out dedicated app for that. So just one of those things, but you have the filter in here to do some of the, uh, some of the basic adjustments. So bicolor toning simulates a traditional bi, uh, simulates a traditional glass bicolor filter. Fun stuff. Brightness contrast. Okay, fine. Channel mixer. There's something you're not going to find in, uh, in Lightroom. Clarity, obviously very powerful. And again, remember that you can brush these in and that is one of those, oops, sorry, I was, thought it was on the big screen. Um, this is one of those that you can brush into great effect because clarity is one of those that, I'll say you got a picture of a, a person against a brick wall and the brick wall is this really great texture. You really want to bring up the texture of the brick wall. So you crank up the clarity, but now the person looks like they've just came out of a mine shaft. They're just so gritty and grainy. That's no good. So by being able to brush the layer adjustment, mask that out, you can apply the clarity and then take, what, take it away from the person's face. So these kind of things are just super, super powerful. All right, color balance, color contrast, color temperature, yeah, obvious. Color processing, that's fun. Uh, you could curve, you have a basic curves tool in there. Details enhancer, which is similar-ish to structure, but has some differences. So definitely something to play with and experiment with and figure out what works for you. A dramatic, you know, you got the drama filter. You gotta have a filter called drama, why not? Exposure adjustments, fog, love this, love the fog. Hey, that's Amsterdam. Is that the Pisa Hark? That's like, I think that's the canal I used to live on, actually. How funny. Anyway, um, you've got a fog filter. Beautiful. Foliage enhancer. So, okay, here's, this is a really good example of the cleverness of these tools. Foliage enhancer. Okay, so what's it going to do? It's probably increasing saturation in the greens, maybe a little bit of the yellows, maybe adding a little contrast, a little structure to it. I don't really know, but it's going to be doing things like that because that's the kind of thing that you would do to enhance the foliage. As a super pro Photoshop artist, you know exactly what you have to do to do that. And you take 15 steps and you do exactly what you got to do. But here you've got a tool called foliage enhancer and you just drag that on and you know, in fact, let's do it. And let me add that guy to this and I'm going to reset this image. Let me just reset this layer. Uh, where are we? Reset, reset all filters. There we go. Back to default. So this foliage is lacking <laughs> for lack of a better word. Now let's just uh, crank up the amount on there. Ooh, look at the green. So look at the green in the front here. That all got real nice and shiny, pretty. And then I can take a hue. And what's that going to do? So, okay, so there we go. We're shifting. So it's not like a full 360 degree hue rotation. We're pulling out of the super saturated greens into a little bit more towards the yellows. If I go the other way, it's probably going to go yeah, a little bit more towards blues, if that's the colors that you want for your foliage. But you can very easily just dial that in. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. Uh, so that's fully, so that's one of those really nice things on here. You don't have to know how to do things. You find the tool that describes the way you want to do it. And I totally blew that and did that like this again. So let's go back and do that one more time uh, with the amount. There's the amount slider, bringing those greens way up. And then the hue on there, if you want to go a little bit toward, more towards yellow on your greens or a little bit more towards blue. So just one of those, one of those awesome little features. Okay. Uh, so our foliage enhancer grains, you got a grain filter. Nice. I love adding grain. Let me actually tell you a little story about grain. Often, especially when it comes to digital, we think about wanting to remove noise. We want to get rid of all that, make it as clean as possible. Okay. Fair enough. You got, and you shoot a, just keep that in the back of your head. Now you go out and you shoot something at, you know, ISO 200, perfectly sunny day. There's not a drop of noise or grain or anything representing it in the image. Image looks super clean and beautiful. Sometimes that can look too clean. So a little bit of grain, grain will take that digital harshness off. So I like to call it the digital harshness. It's, it's an over sharp, hyper real, just a little bit too clean. And it's not to say, oh, I want to full on Instagram my image and make it look like I was shot in film in the 1940s. No, I just want to take that digital edge off of it, make it just look a little bit more analog. So I did a book uh, about a year ago. Yeah, we released about a year ago called Beauty After Breast Cancer. It's a whole breast cancer project, beautyafterbreastcancer.com. Please go check that out. And every photo was shot digital, but I added a little bit of film grain to every photo and it made for a beautiful look especially when printed. The prints have a very analog, tangible look to them that you, it's just a little bit of life that you're missing from a purely digital image. So that little bit of, I'm not saying make it look like it was shot on T-Max 60, 3200. We're not going for that. We're just going for just take that little digital edge off and it could really make a big, big difference. So um, 
I just realized too, I wanted to do something else while I was bouncing around here like a madman, which I forgot to do. So let me just put this up here now. Oh, wrong screen. Well, there you go. Now you see my switcher. Um, this. I wanted to throw this up just as a reminder. I threw that down on the bottom earlier, but if you are going to pre-order the software, photoapps.expert slash Luminar will get you there for just the $59. Um, you also get a bunch of bonuses that are only available until November 16th. And of course, the full price of this is going to be $240. So please, please do uh, head over to that URL to place your pre-order if you just so decide to buy it based off of my silly little antics up here. So that's the first one. I got a few other things I'm going to throw up here, but um, I got to remember to I got to remember to uh, put them up in a timely manner. I need like reminders. I need a crew, honestly. It's ridiculous. Okay, let's go back to Luminar. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Where were we? We were on foliage, grain, grain. Okay, high key, high key filter, pretty self explanatory. Highlights and shadows tool. So it's got its own dedicated separate highlights and tattoos. Highlights and tattoos. That is a technical term. HSL adjustments. Image radiance, so uh, you, the description here. So this is one of those where the description becomes really handy. Creates a dreamy fantasy look for photos by increasing contrast and adding a creative glow. Prioritizing, prioritized to the lighter areas of the image. So I don't have one here, but I had a photo earlier when I was playing with a, another app that had this, uh, this filter. And I put it on a, a photo and shot at night with a lamppost. And the lamppost gets this lovely glow. Ah. Oh, it's so nice. Nice, lovely glow. So pretty. So that's really cool. Randy, you're right up the street. You give you a call. Interesting. Shoot me an email. I'd love to meet you. Um, okay, so that's that's that. That's just really, really cool. All right. Um, what else we have? Microstructure. Very, very good for getting those fine, fine details. Oh, yeah. I love this. Okay, Orton effect. I want a different image. Let's use... Let's see here. I'm going to close this and close this. Close out the kitty cat. And you don't need to see that and or that. And let's go back into Luminar and open. Uh, let's do, I'm going to try this portrait. Actually, I actually haven't tried it yet on this portrait. I don't really know how this is going to look. So who knows what the Orton effect is? I, I had to look it up. I'd heard of it before, but I didn't really know what it was. So Orton effect, it is a technique. It's an old film based technique. Negatives uh, taking Oh, interesting. Uh, taking two versions of an image. I, it's not can be film based. That doesn't make any sense. Whatever. <laughs> it's a technique where you take two versions of an image, a blurry one and the original sharp one, and you blend them together to get this really cool effect. Um, I don't like this image. I'm going to close it. I'm going to open a different photo. Let's go back to the, uh, to the tiger here. Um, oh, and I think it's worth pointing out as well. So the raw processing that's happening here is... MacFun's own raw engine. Kevin, slap me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure that's right. Uh, so images, raw images of the open are going to look a little bit different here than they will in other apps because it's just how MacFun is processing those raw files. So an important thing to uh, to consider when you're playing around with it. All right. Now let's see here. Let's open, we've got this up. Let's go ahead and add in the uh, Orton. See, I don't know where it is. I'm just going to type in Orton. There we go. Orton effect. Uh, here's the description for you. Allows enhancements to an image that includes glow and focus, which produces photos that are sharp and blurry at the same time. At the same time. How does that work? All right, let's find out. So let's apply that. And oh, there's different types. I haven't played with this yet, actually. And ooh, let's drag that up. Now I haven't played. I've, you know what? Here, before I do that, let me turn this off. I'm going to do a quick adjustment to the image. I want to add curves because I am a big believer in curves. I love curves. So let's just go to curves and add some curves in here. We're going to do a simple little S curve, little contrast in there. Too much contrast. Let's bring that up a little bit. And I think I'm going to bring the highlights up a little bit more. And then I'm going to bring the colors up a touch just to get this image looking the way I want it to, to start. Saturation, we can bring that up a bit. Not that much. Okay, so there's a pretty good starting point. So now let's go back to the Orton, the Orton effect. Turn that on and drag the amount of and Kevin is confirming that our raw engine is a combo of apples, open source, and our own mojo. Well, there's the mojo for you. Now look at that. Look at that. It's so cool. Before and after, I'm just turning the or the Orton effect on and off. I'm not turning the whole doing you know, a whole before and after. Um, but it's beautiful. That is beautiful. Let's zoom into 100% on the kitty kitty here. And that's a little bit too close. Let's back off. Back up. Back up. There we go. Nope. Too far. Back in. There we go. I think that is so cool. It just adds this softness without 
losing sharpness, if that makes any sense at all. I think it's so cool. Um, Bendix asking, have you categorized the filter so it's easy to, and fast to find which one will be great for portraits, landscapes, et cetera? Yeah. If I go into the add filters here, uh, they are, well, they're categorized, not by portrait, that sort of thing, but you see they're categorized by, let me reset the search, color effects, creative effects, tonal enhancements, and so on. But then you can always mark a favorite. So if I, you know, I love clarity, I love saturation, I use this all the time, I can go into my favorites and I have those marked in there. Um, so that's, hopefully that helps. Okay, so the Orton effect. I think this is supremely cool. All right, let's get back in here, see what else there is. Let's go back to all. And we are at Orton, Orton, Orton. There it is. So we got photo filters uh, for adding color filter overlays, polarizing. So you get a polarizing effect. It's not going to cut through glass. You can suddenly see through glass, but it is going to add that. Um, Kevin, I will, I will, I promise. Um, I will, uh, <laughs> I won't forget. Um, streaming is going offline. Um, Randy, if you're watching it on my site, the stream is entirely handled by, uh, by YouTube at this point. So, and people are saying the stream has stopped. So, all right, let me just double check everything on my end. Everybody, if you're still watching it on YouTube, get out of here, go over to facebook.com. Why am I telling you this? If you're watching on YouTube, you can't hear me. Um, we are starting on Facebook now. Okay. Thank you again, everybody on Facebook for holding so tight. You're so patient. You're so wonderful. Let's do this. So we were on polarizing. I was saying uh, polarizing filter. I'm going to have to figure out a way to cut this for the final piece, whatever. For the polarizing filter, it will uh, intensify skies, the blue skies. It's as if you put a, pol put a polarizing filter on your camera for the skies. It is not going to cut through reflections in water. You're not going to magically see the fish or th see through the windshield of the car. Um, but for having that haze reduction slash sky bluing, blue darkening of the skying effect, it's a technical term, um, the polarizing filter works great. Removing color cast. Oh, I forgot to put this on. You probably want to see this, don't you? Uh, removing color cast. I, I promised I would zoom in a bit. So we're going to do that for those watching at 720p, which is everybody now. Uh, saturation and vibrance controls. Very handy. Sharpening. Obviously, we all need sharpening. Soft focus. So you've got the soft focus, soft glow, the fog. You have a lot of really creative filters for doing foggy, glowy, happy place kind of things. I like that. Split color warmth. This is neat here. We're gonna, let's go up and read the description for split color warmth. Okay, I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit. Here we go. Split color warmth. Selectively enhances cool and warm tones in your image. Allows you to get increased color contrast and vibrancy or create creative toning effects. This sample image is a, is a really good example of what this can do. Let me zoom out just a little bit more. I think that is a really nice way of representing it. Um, and it's, you know, it's obviously a great effect. Split toning, we talked about a bunch. Structure, you all know what structure is by now. Texture overlay, very cool. If you want to put a texture on top of your image, you can do that in here. And you could also do it by simply adding a new layer. That'd be cool too, but this is just a built-in kind of a more, more easy, effective way to do that. Toning, um, brightness, contrast, tonal balance, unique signature style to your photos. Honestly, I've never played with this one. <laughs> it's funny because it says tone is one of the most important filters to give your photos the necessary look. Curious, I guess I'll have to play with that. Top and bottom lighting. So this is something that we've seen in uh, in Aurora HDR, the whole top and bottom effect where the top half of the image gets one, the bottom half of the other gets another. Again, this is not something that you can't fairly easily just do through a series of layers, but I love that it's this really simple, apply it uh, with one filter, one adjustment layer and go to town on it. I really like that. I th This is one of the things that I am really coming to appreciate about this app. This is one of those, okay, let's do a, like a little, um, you know, I'm a pro photographer, kind of a rant. I'm a pro photographer and I know how to use all these tools and nobody else does. And that makes me better than them. Yep. BS. It's great that someone knows the tools inside and out. I've been using Photoshop since 1.0. I know it really well. Does that make me a better photographer? Of course not. It might make me more capable in Photoshop than somebody else, but it doesn't make me any better. And having the ability to find tools like the foliage enhancement, where you as an artist, you as a visionary saying, I want to enhance the greens and the trees and make it, but I don't know how. When you have something like a foliage enhancer, it takes those roadblocks away and it lets you do that. And I love that. I really do. Um, it's great. Anyway, okay, so that's enough. All right, back to this. Um, what else do we have? Uh, vignetting, I think that's the last one. Yeah, vignetting was the last one. Okay, so now we're gonna do the last thing here that I'm gonna show you. 
this is something that Kevin's been reminding me, don't forget this because it's so awesome. And I won't, I'm not forgetting Kevin. If you look over here under your filters layer, you'll see this little inconspicuous menu that says workspace. And I'm just gonna go to default. And what that means is, oops, too, wrong way. I have things like my color, temperature, tone, saturation, vibrance, polarizing, basically all your basic adjustments, right? All my basic adjustments are here. And then I can switch to a black and white. I wanna do black and white work. So I'm gonna go to my black and white tools. And now I've got tools that I need to make an awesome black and white image. I want to work on a landscape. So I go to landscape. And now I've got the tools that I need to do an awesome landscape image. See, so it calls up these tools. Let's zoom right into this here. It calls up these tools that you might want to use for this, but then you can save your own. So you come up with your own custom, oh, I love this tool, that tool, and the other one, you can make your own custom workplace or I, whenever I'm doing black and white, I wanna have these tools. When I'm working on landscapes, I wanna have these tools. It's a great, simple way to just quickly switch the tools because there's so many of them. Unless you've got like a 43 inch monitor, you're not gonna see all of them at once. So this way you can have just the tools that you need for a particular type of work all set aside there. And that is super cool. I love that. Okay. Whew, man, we've been bouncing around like a crazy person. Uh, let me throw up one more thing here. And then I think we're probably going to wrap this guy up. Um, I wanted to do this. I want to throw out this offer to you guys. So where is my Mac? Uh, there we go. Ugh, wrong one. Eh, that one. So um, for those of you who don't already know my site, photoapps.expert, I have a membership program and uh, for MacFun, for all you guys watching, you can get 25% off an annual subscription by using the code MacFun at checkout. So go to photoapps.expert slash member to learn about that. And one of the things that you get is these videos, what you just saw me babble my way through here. Um, honestly, they're not all this crazy. I keep putting the wrong screen up. Honestly, they're not all this crazy. I guess a lie, they're all this crazy. Um, <laughs> When I, the way that I do these live trainings is when they're live, they're free always. That's, it's always free to watch live. But then if you want to watch it later, if you missed it live, you want to watch it again, then you can pay for it and you can pay to download it. Or now you can pay as a member, pay a monthly fee or an annual fee. Obviously it's cheaper if you go annual. And then you can stream all of these videos as many times as you want over and over again. It's kind of like Netflix. You just, you know, once you're paying your monthly fee, you have access to the entire streaming library. So we're now just starting this Mac fun uh, uh, Luminar training. We've already kicked off a Mac Fun uh, uh, Aurora HDR 2017 training. Uh, we have a Lightroom series that is almost completed. We have a Photos 1 series that is completed and a Photos 2.0 series that is that probably almost completed, about two thirds of the way through. We have a Capture One series that just kicked off as well. And if you want to go back in time, we've got tons of old Aperture training on there as well. So that's part of what you get. You also, as a member, you get access to all of the streaming video tips. So about half of the tips on the site are video only. And the only way to see those is as a paid member. Membership super cheap. Just go sign up and, you know, feed my family. <laughs> all right. So that's that. That's my pitch there. Um, that's it. That's what I wanted to throw at you guys. I don't, and there's that code right there. Just put in Mac fun. There we go. Right there. Put in Mac fun. You get 25% off. Um, and that's through the end of November. So there you go. Uh, let's see here. I no longer have my crazy comments history that was going so awesomely before because all of you have left that site, rightfully so. Facebook comments are there, but a lot harder for me to see and follow. So I'm not going to try. Um, Kevin, if Kevin, I got my phone. If you want to text me anything, if there's something I missed or you want me to hit, do it now. Otherwise, we are going to end this mad show. And uh, yeah, that'll be that. Is there anything else I want to show you? Oh, let me, one more. Since you're here, check this out. Here. Who wants to go to Mexico? <laughs> I'm doing a photography workshop so you can hang out with my brand of madness from January 14th to the 27th in Oaxaca, Mexico. This is a combination cultural tour slash workshop slash photography workshop. We are going to be going into some pretty epic places in Oaxaca, rural Oaxaca, that normal tourists do not get to go to. This tour is in cooperation with a company in Mexico that does cultural tourism. So we are turning this into a cultural tourism slash photography workshop, photographing things like, uh, God, I keep wanting that. Things like um, uh, textile. We're going to go see textiles made, food made, uh, mezcal made, if you like the mezcal. We're going to see uh, festivals. We're going to see landscapes, obviously, street photography, people photography. We're going to cover a wide range of things. 
all in the course of that nine days or whatever it is. Um, and it's going to be fantastic. It's going to be fantastic. Okay. Kevin has just thrown a something at me that I forgot. Let me pull this up. Safari wants to control this computer. No. And yep, here we go. All right. Uh, let's go back to this. And what I forgot it was the history menu. So you have your undo, redo, and then a history. So here you, oops, it's hard to do when you're zoomed in. There we go. So you have a full access of your history back to the original image, everything that you've done to the image, even swapping landscapes there. So that is a nice little feature that you've got in there. Really? Cool. You like that? I like that. I think that's cool. All right. I think that's it. Whew. What an exhausting, oh, my healing plus cloner stamp. Oh, right. Okay. So there's yeah other tools on the side here. All right. Here, Kevin. Yeah, I love you. Thank you, brother. Um, and Kevin, if you want to call in, you know, let's tempt the gods. Why not? Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, back to the Mac. We are on the Mac. Let's see here. We have over here, right? We didn't even get into these. Transform tools. So you can uh, change the shape, the distortion of an image um, on its canvas, especially useful for doing multiple composites. Clone and stamp tool you have in here. Uh, erasing, erasing part of your image. So that's, you know, I want to get rid of that. Uh, I want to get rid of like the little, yeah, what do you call it? Uh, I don't know, hair that's there. I want to get rid of that tree or that person. Uh, very, very cool. Denoise tools. So you have a denoiser, so you can obviously denoise an image. And then there's your standard crop tool. So those are all the kind of things we're going to get into in depth in future trainings because it's just, uh, it's just cooler that way. Okay. Whew. Kevin, if you're going to call me, give me a call. If you're not going to call me, that's okay. If he calls, so it's cool. If Kevin calls me, we can do a little side by side, you know, video calling kind of thing. Normally I open that up to everybody, but this is just gone madness today. So we're not going to do that. <sighs> I'm kidding about the call in. Yeah, I think that's probably a good approach to it. Let's not do the call in. All right, guys, thank you so much. Um, last, last reminder, let's just throw this back up on the screen so you can remember where to get this stuff from. If you are looking to purchase Yonder app, you can pre-order it. This is shipping on the 17th. So pre-ordering, um, I believe, it goes up until the 16th. And that is, uh, which is like soon, right? What's today? Today's the 14th. So you're kind of running out of time. Photoapps.expert slash Luminar. That will get you that price and um, throw a few shekels to me from my creative madness. And uh, you get some exclusive bonuses, as it says there, all until November 16th. Full price will be 240 So, you know. Don't delay. You don't want to miss the bargains. Whew. What a show. I mean, seriously, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for sticking around. Um, a lot of you stuck around. I really do appreciate that. I know one guy was out of here early because he's like, this is crazy. That's cool. I get it. Not everybody's brand of madness. But if you enjoyed this, I will be doing this sort of thing a lot. Usually it's not quite this manic. A big part of this was the whole YouTube kerfuffle you know, all the testing in the world look fine. And then of course you go live and it goes to hell. So what are you going to do? That's it. I'm out of here, guys. I need a drink. <laughs> I'll talk to you all later. If you have questions about this, this video, oh, right. If you missed any of this, uh, this whole thing will go up on my site this afternoon or this evening, depending on how quickly I can get it encoded and uploaded, but we will get this up there so you can watch it again or scrub back to any part that you missed. And we'll probably cut out the complete middle screw up part. So if you're watching this recorded and you're wondering what I'm just talking about, what I just was talking about, you missed something epic. You got to watch live. All right, guys. See you later. Bye-bye.